Good morning, everyone. Kay here on my Tennessee homestead, and my tomatoes have not performed that well since August, and here we are at the end of the growing season, and I haven't done any canning. I bought all the equipment, and I am determined to can. So what do you do? You go to a farm stand or a farmer's market, preferably at the end of the day when they are eager to make deals, and I just picked up two boxes of canning tomatoes. One I am going to make into just regular plain tomato chunks sauce, and the other I am going to slow cook in my 360 cookware and make spaghetti sauce. So stay with me. I just want to point out, you know, I've been talking a lot on this channel in the last year about products made in the United States. And this is my new big pot. <laughs> I don't know if it has a name, but this is 360 cookware and this is made in Wisconsin and it is gorgeous. And over here I have my slow cooker. So I will be doing the spaghetti sauce in the slow cooker. I'm gonna get that going first. I'm gonna wash up my tomatoes, prepare the vegetables, put everything in and put the lid on and then later I can start getting organized for canning. And of course, you've got to wash your tomatoes, so that's the first step. Some of these have a few bad spots, so I'm gonna put a little vinegar in with my veggie wash, make sure any bacteria is off. I got a fair amount of trimming to do on these. I'm going to take the core out. So I'm going to get all these prepared and ready to go into the saucepan. So I'm planning to use the skins. It's just an extra step that takes a lot of time. I've washed these well with my veggie wash and vinegar. I'm going to cut off all the bad spots. I'm going to core the middle. Take that out. And I'm just going to cut them into like eight pieces, each one. And then later, I have an immersion blender and I'll grind everything up. There's probably even a device to do this on tomatoes, but I only have a knife. You know what? I think I'm going to use my other cutting board. I just saw this from Mary's Nest channel. I only just thought of it, but this way the juice just goes right in <laughs> and you don't have all of this mess. It's a lot smaller though. You just have to dump it more often. These are pretty juicy for a paste tomato. Yeah, that works great. Thank you, Mary's Nest. Okay, I have a lot of this to do, so I'll be back with you later. Okay, I cut off quite a bit of that because, you know, they had been sitting in the box for a couple days. This is what's left of the first box. And this is going to cook down into some nice uh, chunks to can. So that's the next step. And if you hear a sound going, I'm getting my house power washed today. Something I've been looking forward to since I came here. So 
I have my tomatoes ready to start simmering. I'm gonna turn this on low. And I have not canned, I have not deep water canned since 2017. And so I thought it would be a good idea, and so did my friend Daryl, if I picked up the ball canning book for tomato sauce. I mean, it says 45 pounds of tomatoes. <laughs> I am going to simmer the tomatoes in a, the large saucepan until they're soft and stirring to prevent sticking. And then I'm going to puree them. It says in here to use an electric food strainer or food mill. But what I have is I bought an immersion blender because I saw other people using them. That's what we're going to do. This is going to be cooking. For a little while until they're soft and then meanwhile I'm going to get the rest of the tomatoes ready for the spaghetti sauce. My tomatoes are tender and now what I'm going to do is use my immersion blender and make it into a puree and I've never used one of these this is my first time. <laughs> Maybe you turn it on when it's in the Maybe it doesn't work like that. <laughs> Maybe you're supposed to have it. Okay, evidently I need... <laughs> I thought surely I don't have to read the directions. I mean, it's so simple. Okay, maybe I have the wrong attachment. This is the one I have. <laughs> I read the directions and it is this attachment. This is the blending shaft. You don't hold the power down for more than 50 seconds at a time. You start it above the mixture and press it in. And you just go kind of up and down. And obviously you don't want to scratch your... I don't want to scratch my brand new pot. So I'm not going to hit the bottom. My house is being power washed, so that's what you hear outside. It does take some getting used to. So here we go. I think that's ready. I've obviously been doing that a little bit, but once you get the hang of it, it really does grind it up, see? Okay, so we are ready to start cooking this down. You're supposed to reduce the volume by half not going to give me a whole lot to can. Turn it on medium-high heat and stir it so it doesn't stick. Wow, that looks fantastic. I want to do this again. Okay, everybody, it is looking really nice. I'm just letting this cool down a little bit because I have to go to the store and get some citric acid for canning acidic vegetables and fruits. Like tomatoes, you have to use either citric acid or bottled lemon juice. And I don't have any. So this is pretty much half of what it was, because it was up to here. And I'm going to stop there, go get the citric acid, and then we'll start the canning process when I get back. <coughs> Meanwhile, I have cut up all of the second box for the spaghetti sauce. And <laughs> it's overflowing, but we know it's going to cook down. So I'm going to cook the tomatoes down as I did the sauce, and then I'm going to start adding ingredients. Okay, I'm back from the store. I have the citric acid. My jars are hot in the dishwasher. My lids are hot on the stove, 
and my canning water, my deep water canning bath is simmering. So we're gonna start assembling all of this together. You wanna to put a half of a teaspoon of citric acid in each quart of sauce. That goes in first. You want to fill it up just to within one inch of the top. You want to wipe it off. Make sure it's nice and clean. And the lid. Get it centered on there good. And you want to just hand tighten it. You don't want it too loose because it could come looser in the canner, but you don't want it so tight you can't get it off. And so this is going to sit on the rack. I'll show you in a minute. Now I don't have enough for a whole quart, so I'm going to put the remainder of my sauce in with my spaghetti sauce. Okay, we are going to lower this into the simmering water. I think the water is simmering. It's supposed to be. Making a lot of noise. I'm going to just get that a little bit hotter. I can't believe this, but you know, I've never canned on this stove before and it just wouldn't start boiling on this eye this burner so I had to move it and get the heat back up so now it's simmering and I'm going to lower it into and I'm going to keep my face back because one time I burned my face I'm going to lower that in and it has to be it has to be an inch more than the than the jars Oh my gosh, that's not even enough. You know what, I'll just put it in. It's gonna have to, it's gonna have to come all the way back up. I was expecting to have more jars, which would have been less water. Let's measure that. That is an inch, but I'm gonna put a little more. Okay. It says to put the lid on, adjust the temperature to medium high. Bring it back up to a rolling boil and it has to process for 40 minutes for quart jars. It's been 40 minutes. The jars have been sitting here for five minutes with the lid off. And now you take them out of the hot water to cool. Be careful and, okay, there's one pop right there. Be careful not to spill the hot water on the lid on yourself. Two. These two are sealed. Yep. There goes the other one. When it's bubbling in the water, that's called processing. So while it was processing for 40 minutes, I was working on some ferments because I picked up a couple of big bags of peppers, sweet peppers from the farm stand as well. So I'm working on five quart jars right here and I'll be doing covering fermenting in a separate video. These jars need to sit here for 12 hours and we'll check on them tomorrow. They don't call this a slow cooker for nothing, okay? <laughs>
So this hasn't even completely broken down yet. So I am going to cook this overnight and tomorrow I am going to make the spaghetti sauce with all the ingredients and then can that. Hey, good morning everybody. Well, I got some good rest last night and got everything cleaned up this morning and I've made a big decision. I am not going to finish my spaghetti sauce. I am just going to leave it as a chunky tomatoes and can that. And that way, when I get ready to make spaghetti, I can put in whatever ingredients I want. Some of which I don't have right now. So that's what I'm gonna do. This has been cooking all night. Let's see if this is hot. A little bit hot. I've got my water. You hear my water simmering in my canner. And come in for a closer look. You can see it's really chunky. And yes, the peels are here. And if I don't like the peels, when I get ready to actually make some, I actually like tomatoes like this better for chili, for example. So I could use this for chili as well as spaghetti sauce. And if I want it smoother, I've got the immersion blender. But this is what we're going to put in our jars, which are hot right now. Okay, I think I have everything ready, you know, with canning. It's like you've got to have everything ready. My water is simmering. Hopefully there's enough to cover. And I only had two quarts. I thought I had two cases of quart jars, but I only had one because I have a whole lot of smaller ones. So I had the one and a half pints that you're supposed to use for pressure canning beans. So I had some of those, so hopefully it'll come out the correct amount. Now, I had a little problem. <laughs> you, you got to miss that. The bottom of this, I cleaned off the bottom of this pot, so be, be careful if you have the kind of slow cooker that sits on a warming pot, warming uh, implement, because it has a tendency to stick. And I guess it's so flat that, you know, it just, if there's a drop of water or sauce or anything under there. So anyway, I lifted this big heavy thing that's hot up and started to go and the device was plugged in. So it pulled me back and um, I probably lost about a cup of sauce of tomatoes. So it's like a big cleanup job. Okay, so let's get to it. We'll start with quartz. Half a teaspoon of citric acid in each jar. Now I'm not adding any salt. The ball canning book just says citric acid is the only thing I have to add. Maybe a little too much. I think I've got an inch there. Yep. I don't know. Maybe I should just take out one little chunk. There. Okay. Now you want to be sure and clean off the rim. These are nice and hot. Okay, I'm going to set this on my rack for my pot. So these are the very cool pint and a half jars, primarily for beans. It's got the measurement on the side. So I'm going to do a quarter and an eighth. 
to get the correct amount of citric acid for a pint and a half. But you know, if you're like me and you're basically cooking for yourself, this might be a great amount, you know, for like two nights, you can make up just a small amount of chili or something and have it for one or two nights. That looks right. Maybe. Just one more. Nope, too much. I want to show you this cool little lid holder that I bought. I decided for the first time, if I was going to really get into canning here, I wanted all the equipment. Okay, believe it or not, you know, you don't do this for four years and you forget all kinds of stuff. And I have more sauce over there. I could have easily put more of the bean jars in the dishwasher, which I ran some of the dishes from last night. And I needed at least one and a half more jars. So I'm gonna go ahead and do these because they need to get done. Okay. Whoa, that's heavy and they're not well supported in the middle. Um, why did I take the glove off to do that? That's interesting. Maybe if I push it. I read about this online when I was trying to decide which canner to get, um, that the racks are not always... Ah. Oh my gosh. Not quite enough water, but I've got water, hot water, in my pan. Oops, to add. Don't spill it everywhere, okay? Let's see if that's an inch. Hopefully it is. Um, how did I do that? It's not quite an inch. Gotta get some water. Okay, I've got some more water here. Bring that up just a tad. And that should work. Yep. It's 40 minutes for these. It's 35 minutes for a quart. Excuse me, it's 40 minutes for a quart. It's 35 minutes for a pint. These two, these three, should, should be 37 minutes. Oh. <laughs> ah, I can cover it. I reread the direction. You can cover it, which obviously helps it, helps it to come up to the temperature much faster. So if you, done a lot of canning and you just hate it the way the lids get stuck together in the little pan, you can get one of these things and they sit individually. The only problem is you've got to have a deeper pot because the hot water's got to cover this, whereas you can have a little pot if they're laying flat. But look how, look how cool that is to just pull them out. Awesome. So while I was waiting for these to process last night, I did these six ferments. What I noticed on these is, you know, sitting in that water, there's kind of a film. These were clean when they went in that water, but I think this is a result of my hard water here. There's so much rock around here, so much limestone, and it's just kind of <laughs> covered. But the good thing is, all of these lids are sealed. Okay, it's been five minutes. 
with the lid off and they'll whip these out and hope they pop. This one popped in the pan before I got it out. You'll see the indentations going down. These are still sticking up. What happened? Oops. That one's down. But these three are not down. Hmm. One. Come on, two more. Ah, good. All down. Wow, that came out exactly three more. That's amazing. It's supposed to be simmering. It's almost simmering. We're going to wait till it's simmering. Okay, finally. It is simmering. You want to do this very carefully. Don't want to get burned. I got burned in 2017. You don't want that. Works a lot better when it's full. And it could have been full. <laughs> if I'd had all my jars clean and hot at the same time. But I miscalculated how much I made. So make sure you have enough jars clean, washed, and hot. You don't have to use the dishwasher. But they have to be sterilized. Okay, you see? I don't have enough water in here. Not nearly enough. Ow. See? My finger was in the way. Don't do as I do. There we go. That looks like an inch. Barely. Just a little bit more. Okay. I put the lid on and let it come to a rolling boil and then process this for 37 minutes because these are three pint and a halfs. Okay, I am done. I have the four from last night, the four quarts. Two quarts of crushed tomatoes plus six pint and a halfs. That is two quarts and that is two quarts. So that's two, four, six, four, ten quarts of tomatoes processed. Thanks so much for your support of this channel, and I hope you subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, scroll down and click all so you won't miss anything right here on my Tennessee homestead. I'll see you in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, please watch these. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And I'll see you in the next video.